Welcome to Linda's Home Kitchen and Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm Linda's husband, Stefan. I'm originally from Germany. And back then, I didn't really know a lot about a traditional American Thanksgiving. Fast forward 25 years and it became my favorite holiday. These days, I tend to buy too much turkey. So even two days later, we still had a lot of leftovers. So Linda turned them into a dish that you can enjoy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So stay tuned and see what Linda is cooking up for us today. So first we need four tablespoons of shortening and butter each, five tablespoons of water, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Yes, we are making a dough, so that's your first hint. We are baking something. Now we put a flour into a bowl, season it with salt and mix it. Next we add in the shortening and we work it with our fingers until crumbly. By the way, this is not a holiday specific dish. You can have it all year long. You can eat it hot or cold. We just happen to make it now because we had leftover turkey from Thanksgiving. Next we add in the butter, same procedure. We mix it and work it in with our fingers until we have about quarter size chunks. Next, we add three tablespoons of water and we mix it in until combined. Next, we toss in the rest of the water and mix it in until it barely holds together when you squeeze the dough. So now we can transfer the dough onto a sheet of plastic wrap. Then we shape the dough into a circle. And then after you cover the dough with a plastic wrap, you can flatten it into a one inch thick disc. And then you put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Now that the dough has cooled down and rested, we get ready to prep it for the oven. First, we cover the dough, the work surface, and the rolling pin with flour so the dough doesn't stick to anything when we roll it out. We want to end up with a dough that's about 13 inches in diameter and no thicker than half an inch. To transfer your dough to a pie pan, simply roll it onto your rolling pin. It makes the dough way easier to handle. Use a pan 9 inches in diameter and grease it with some baker scoop. I put the ingredients for baker scoop in the description so you can make your own at home. So now we can roll on the dough onto the pie pan. And we want to crimp the edges using your thumb and fingers just like that. should end up with a nice wavy edge just like that. And next use a fork to prick holes on the bottom of the entire crust. So because we are brown baking the crust, we're gonna place a layer of crumbled parchment paper on top of the pie. So we can add some pie weights to it. If you don't have any, you can just use beans or rice. We just use them so the sides don't cave in. They're just there for extra stability during baking. So now we're baking the crust for 20 minutes at 375 degrees. So after the pie comes out of the oven, we just remove the pie weights and set the crust aside and we start working on our filling. So I guess that's the second hint. You might have figured it out by now. We are actually making a turkey quiche. First, we're gonna peel and chunk a medium-sized sweet potato. You might even have some leftover sweet potato from your Thanksgiving dinner, so you can use that even better. By the way, if you're still watching, I'm assuming you're enjoying this video. We are a small, newer channel, and our focus is to make simple dishes that everybody can make, get real close with the camera, and explaining it in simple terms. So if you could support us by subscribing or giving us a like, we would really appreciate that. So now we cook the potato. If you had leftovers, you can obviously skip that step. So next we're gonna dice one red pepper. The easiest way to do that is to cut off both ends first. Then you take out the core. And then you cut the pepper in thin strips. 
And now when you arrange the strips like this, then you can easily dice the pepper. By the way, as always, the recipe is in the description below the video. So, and next we're gonna shred one cup of cheddar cheese. By the way, I really enjoyed this recipe. It tasted so good and it stays fresh in the refrigerator for a couple days. Perfect for breakfast or a quick lunch. It tastes good cold or you can just reheat it in the microwave real quick. So the sweet potatoes are cooked now, so we take them out. And now we can start sauteing the peppers. Just add two tablespoons of oil in a pan over medium heat. Add the peppers and saute for about five minutes. Next we add four ounces of spinach. And we toss it until the spinach is melted. And then we can take it off the heat. I'm always a little surprised how a whole bowl of spinach gets reduced to almost nothing after you heat it up a little bit. So last step for the filling, we need four eggs in a bowl. We beat the eggs before we add one and a quarter cup of half and half. Simply whisk in the half and half, then season with salt. Pepper, whisk it in and then add a half a teaspoon of thyme as well. So next we add in three quarter cup of our cooked and shredded turkey. We also add in our sauteed peppers and spinach. And last but not least we add our cooked sweet potatoes. So let's mix it all together we are still missing one ingredient for the filling and that's the cheddar cheese we're only going to use half of the cheese in the filling and the rest we're going to use to top it all off so let's bring back our pie crust we simply pour our filling into the pie crust and now we make sure that all the vegetables in the turkey are evenly distributed in the pie now we just top it off with the rest of the cheese and now we're gonna sprinkle a third of a cup of crispy fried onions on top so now the quiche is ready for the oven we bake it in 375 degrees for 40 to 50 minutes until the center is just about to set Ooh, look at that that came out really nice so before you start cutting into the quiche, let it cool down for about 15 minutes. As you cut it, you can really hear how crispy the pie crust turned out. I have one suggestion so I feel like we chunked the sweet potato a little bit too big. They're almost bite-sized chunks, so there is a chance that you take a bite out of the quiche and half of it consists of sweet potato. So I think smaller chunks of sweet potatoes are better. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Once again, please like and subscribe. Our last video was a turkey corn chowder. If you're interested in that, click on the suggested video at the end. Thank you for watching. Yours truly, Linda and Stefan.